Trinity Exposed number 21, The Separation of Body, Soul, and Spirit. I've been talking a lot about this. Now we're going to go over the Scriptures. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Three in one. I have a spirit, I have a soul, and I have a body. You see, man is created in God's image. There are not three separate unique persons of me. And there aren't three separate unique persons of the Godhead. Body, soul, spirit. One God. That's how the thing works. If you're, gonna, if you're saved, you'll get it. If you're not, well, you're just not going to get it. You just keep banging your head against the wall and because you can't figure it out. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 5. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. This is Paul speaking here. But check this out. Can the body and the soul separate? Verse 2. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. Wait a second here. Paul is saying, and you, you study the thing out, it's him. He gets stoned to death at one point in time in the book of Acts, and they think he's dead. They take him out of the city and things, and he you know, comes back to life again. He's the one that went up there and saw that. And yet he's saying, of such an one I will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory. Almost like Jesus is saying, you know, my father is greater than I, the soul up there is in a greater position than I am here, in other words. You see how that thing works? But Paul gets up there and he's walking around and he's looking down and he's going, okay, I can feel my hands. I can go like this and I can feel, but I can't see anything. Whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. I have no idea. It was his soul that was up there. His dead body down there on the ground, they're, they're taking it out of the city and they're putting him down and they're going, oh man, what are we going to do? Spirit of the Lord enters back into him there. He comes up. You know? How does all that stuff work? I have no idea. But I know what the Bible teaches. The body and the soul can separate. Again, like I've said in other videos, somebody comes in here and shoots me dead. My body doesn't just, just disappear. My body goes down and blood comes out and whatever else. And they go and they bury me. You know, okay. Well, does that mean my soul is there in the body and my spirit? No, they've gone. They've left. That's why Jesus dying on the cross and he says, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? The soul left. And then he gives up the ghost. The spirit leaves. But they were all part of him, you see. But here's another part to it. Romans chapter 7, verse 22 through 25. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, his soul. But I see another law in my members, his flesh. In other words, warring against the law of my mind. Again, referring to the, the spiritual there, the, the soul. It's like the law of his mind. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members, the body of sin. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? The flesh. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, in other words, compared to the, the soul and things there, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. See? Can the body and soul and spirit and things be have separation and whatnot? Yeah. We don't quite get it like the Lord does, you know, but there can be that separation there. We can't do this just at will, you know, it doesn't work that way for us. We're not God. But we're made up of the same components as God. Revelation chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw 
under the altars the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them, that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Um, you wait a second here. Souls, you can see them when you get to heaven? Mm -hmm. Well, then could it be that the one on the throne that's sitting there is the soul of the Godhead, God the Father on the throne? And Jesus Christ, the Lamb, comes up and takes the book out of his hand. The body. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's perfect description. It's not two separate beings up there. It's not two separate persons with their own body, soul, spirit, body, soul, spirit. That's heresy. Completely unprovable from Scripture. What I'm saying is proven fact. Whether you like me or not, whether you think I'm crazy or whatever else, this is what the Bible teaches. Plain and simple. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 6. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Again, I've talked about this in other videos, but it's just so central to understand. Our soul, there's already connection where we're sitting in, seated, seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus right now. And I have no idea how that works. I know that there are days when I see something really bad happening, and things are bad happening in the world, whatever else, and I just feel down all day. And I've said to many times, people I preach to and things, you're, when you feel that way as a Christian, that grief and just, oh, you know, you're feeling what God's feeling. We have a spiritual connection, and we can't understand all that. But I can say that my soul is greater than my body of flesh. I struggle with this body of flesh, with a desire to sin. But my soul in there, the law of my mind, where I'm thinking about the things of the Lord and remembering the scriptures and things, there's a constant war, there's a constant friction there. And again, most of these Trinity people that I've known and I've had dealings with, they don't believe in being born again. They've never experienced the new birth. Changed life after salvation is a heresy to them. They don't know anything about being born again. So they don't feel that friction there between the body and the soul and the spirit. They don't feel it. So to them, to understand the Godhead, how it works, it's foreign. It's a foreign concept to them because their flesh is totally in control and they see no reason to change that. Better be careful who you listen to.